test is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome. This is Dr. Richard Barwell, and we're going to be doing a sort of a 15-minute a quick reviews here of, of uh, marketing brain health and talking about the future for chiropractic. Um, I did this sort of format because I realized that your times are, are really important and we have these breaks at lunch and, and et cetera, so we can do 15-minute hits and, and move on. I have to say that for those of you that are clients, there's going to be a review primarily on the first two 15-minute segments. Um, then we will get into dialogue in the office and on how you can communicate uh, the change from spinal-based chiropractic to, to uh, brain-based chiropractic. That's the whole intent and the idea of all of this. So for those of you that are new to this, uh, this is going to be sort of the opening round. And one of the things that we have to do is we have to change the mind of, of the chiropractor if he's going to talk about uh, brain health and instead of spinal health in the office. And we want to give you the armament to be able to understand how important that shift is. And that's what today's topic is going to be all about. So let's see what we can do here about moving. Okay. From pain to brain. One of the things that we need to consider from a chiropractic standpoint is what's the process behind the creation of the vertebral subluxation? We have been so focused on vertebral subluxation and a discussion with patients about vertebral subluxation and how it presses on the nerve that we miss the main point that there is a process behind the creation of that vertebral misalignment that's creating all sorts of problems. Now, the problems may not be directly bone on nerve nerve root and, and interference at that level, that's what's been shown to not be the case. But that doesn't mean that the vertebral subluxation isn't important or doesn't create a, an interference within the system. It does because motion in the spine is absolutely critical for proper brain function. So we need to be able to look at, at what's going on with that subluxation, not only from the standpoint of it's there and we're going to correct it, but how did it get there? Because there has to be something that created that. And that's very important in the aspect of what we're trying to accomplish with neurologically based chiropractic. Toxins, trauma, thoughts, mental, physical, emotional stressors are involved in the process of the creation of that vertebral misalignment or that fixation in the spine. Once that fixation is there, now it starts to create more problems into the system. So that's where we need to be focused on what the chiropractic adjustment actually does from the standpoint of improving neurological function. So stress overloads the brain's processing capability or capacity. It's just like in your computer. If you load up your computer with all sorts of programs, finally it gets to the point where it says, I can't handle all of this and it starts to slow down. And when it starts to slow down, we start to run into problems. And especially when we keep poking at things and trying to get the computer to work and all of a sudden, now we've made a big mess within the computer and it starts to, to malfunction. The human brain is no different. It does the same thing. When we overload it with stressors, it reduces the capacity of the brain to process information. And then that processing of information, it not only is the amount of information coming in, but how it takes and integrates that information into the system so that you can get a proper action on the way out. So a moment of truth for chiropractic. Some of you have seen this before. And, and here's something I'm going to do with this group. I don't ever really release my slides. I've worked very hard for these, but I am going to give you these slides. Uh, of, for this whole series. Um, and each time we complete it, we will send you one of those, th that particular series of the slides. So I just ask that you use them within the context of what I'm talking about. You don't try, try to apply something else to it when, I'm, when you're using them. So the moment of truth for chiropractic. There's three systems of the body. And this is something for you to remember. And this is an easy way to deal with patients. There's the passive system. That's the bones and joints. And here's what it is about the bones and joints. They're passive, they do nothing on their own. So all the years that chiropractic has been focused on the spinal bones and we became bone doctors or back doctors or spine doctors, we missed out on the point that the fact that these bones do nothing on their own, so they can't be the cause of the problem. And yet that's what we have done. We've made that the cause of their problem. And that's why we became spinal doctors and bone doctors. 
Well, then we have to look at the next system, which is the active system. That's the muscles. The muscles create all the action, but uh, with th throughout the body, including respiration, cardiovascular work, elimination, reproduction, you name it, it's all driven by muscle activity. But here's the thing, if we just focus on the muscles and just become musculoskeletal doctors, which is the movement today, we're in trouble because you're still not addressing the true cause of the problem. The muscles don't act on their own. And because they don't act on their own, like the bones and joints, they can't be the cause of the people's problem. Then what we have at the top is we have the nervous system. That's the control system. And in that control system, we have this incredible computer, the central organizing authority at the top of the chain called the brain. And the brain is the seat of all dysfunction. So the problem that starts, that creates the vertebral subluxation starts in the brain. And until we start addressing what's going on in the brain, we're not really dealing with the problem. One of the wonderful things about chiropractic and the reason that we've gotten results over the years is we have discovered over the last 20 years of research, we've discovered that chiropractic improves brain function. And when we improve the brain function, it improves the muscle activity. When we improve the muscle activity, we get ideal motion. One of the primary areas that we have to be able to do this is through the spine because of its rich neurological innervation and we do a, an adjustment on the spine and it sends a wave of information into the brain and the brain says, I like that, I need to be paying attention and I, this is gonna help me to reorganize. So when this paradigm shift, we just have to move from pain to brain. We have to kick it upstairs. What's the relationship between stress, illness and disease? Well, wait a minute, if the stressors, mental, physical and, and chemical, are the cause of the problem, we need to be experts on stress. We need to be able to, to communicate with the patients about how the stress is creating their problem and what we can do to help them. We're not gonna manage their stress, we're gonna fix their nervous system so it can manage the stress. That's the goal of chiropractic. So this was way back in 1990. The, the, the research already said this. Current medical research said that 95% of all diseases and illness are caused by stress. Other 5% are considered to be genetic in nature, which is stress at the cellular level. Now, here's what I want to tell you about these slides. You can have these slides to be made into posters to put up on your walls. This is the information you need to have all over the place in your office so that people start looking at what their, their issues are from a different aspect. So stress influenced disease, 2012, the, the research has gone on to support that 1990. It says stress wreaks havoc on the mind and body. And until now, it's not been exactly clear how stress influences disease and health. But everybody's coming online now and starting to recognize that it's all about the nervous system and stress. Now, researchers have found that chronic psychological stress, and that doesn't have to necessarily have to be psychological, it can be chemical or it can be physical, is associated with the body losing its ability to regulate the inflammatory response. So if it's just psychological stress, well, wait a minute, psychological stress can create other things. It can create an unbalance in, in the gut. So now we have more stress on top of it. So we have chemical, uh, physical, and mental stressors all adding up together. It's not one single thing. Research shows for the first time the effects of psychological stress on the body's ability to regulate the inflammatory process can promote the development and progression of disease. The inflammatory process is the foundation for all diseases. And if the inflammatory process is still there within seven to eight days, we now have a persistent problem. And it is amazing what happens with, with that progression. So from pain to brain, the brain is the central organizing authority and integrates all the systems of the body. Disruption of brain function manifests as dis-ease that good old chiropractic D.D. Palmer word, disease within the body's systems. So that just means that the systems start to get out of balance. And because we are dealing with a closed loop system in the body, that all the systems have to work in balance with one another, once that balance starts to get effective, eventually all the systems are going to become affected. And that in turn starts to lead to illness and disease. 
self-regulation failure. Prefrontal cortex, highest order of cognitive ability. Prefrontal cortex is uh, the last area of development for the human brain. It, that's what makes us unique. And it's the conductor of all the other brain functions. It sets the pace. It tells what's going on and what's happening with it. And it's extremely sensitive to even mild acute stress. So just because we have uh, one hour of, of stress or, or one event of stress doesn't mean that that's all. Stress alters the structure of prefrontal cortex pyramidal neurons. Wait a minute. We're talking about the stress, not just affecting how it works. We're talking the structure of the neurons in the prefrontal cortex. Self-regulation in the brain is dependent on the prefrontal cortex control over the cortical patterns. That's why we have to measure brain waves. That's why we ha you can use this as an indicator as to the effectiveness of your care to change people brain, people's brain function. Self-regulation failure occurs when the processing resources of the brain become overwhelmed and even minor lapses in self-control can snowball into self-regulation collapse. When that happens, we're in big trouble. Here's what it looks like. This is the prefrontal cortex. Reality testing and error monitoring is taken care of by the prefrontal cortex. Top-down guidance and attention and thought. Inhibition of inappropriate actions. That's, that's the seat of the prefrontal cortex. Emotional regulation. It affects all the rest of the This is a key factor, and here we now know that even mild acute stress sets it off. And when that happens, we have compulsive behavior, we have loss of prefrontal regulation for the rest of the brain, and then we start to end up with emotional responses. This is how critical this is. Breaking the pain barrier. Everybody has got us wired into the fact that we've, we've trained people to come in because of pain. We need to stop doing this because the pain is the last resort. When the brain's processing resources are overcome by stress, systems start to fail. The brain cannot self-regulate. It gets stuck into a pattern. And that's the, the beautiful thing about the chiropractic adjustment. It interrupts that pattern and allows the brain then to so, start self-regulating. It breaks the pattern. Signs and symptoms are created to inform the conscious mind of system failure. So we don't even know that we're in trouble until finally the brain gets to the point where it says, I cannot keep manage, managing this. I'm in big trouble. I have to inform the conscious mind we've got a problem. And that's when we develop our signs and our symptoms. The problem has started long before that. Failure of the brain to recover from stress is the foundation of all illness and disease. That's why you need to become experts in stress and be able to have discussions with your patients about the, the goal of this. So brain health assessment, what has greater value to you? What has greater value to your patient? Addressing just the signs and symptoms, let me deal with your pain, Mrs. Brown, or would you like to know what's really causing your pain, Mrs. Brown? Which do you think would be of greater value to you? Just addressing the signs and symptoms and leaving the cause or addressing the cause? It's a duh question, and it's an important question to ask your patient, because the minute they say addressing the cause, you change the intent of the care in the office from alleviation of signs and symptoms to dealing with the cause. When you change intent, you change outcomes. When you change the intent of the care, you change the outcomes. You're going to change how you measure the outcomes. So we deal with this. We deal with the nervous system and our brain that's in beautiful balance. It has eat and everything's adapting right. The immune system's working correctly. We have increased tone where it's now it's, it's fired up and it cannot shut down, or it's gone into decreased tone where it can't even get started and rolling. And then the middle one, tone shifts at instability. That's a bipolar brain pattern that sometimes it's over aroused and sometimes it's under aroused. Sometimes they're just wired right off the end of the stick and the other time they can't even get out of bed and get moving. And then we have the danger one at the bottom. And an exhausted nervous system is 
where we find all the autoimmune system disorders. We'll be going into more of this as time goes on. But that is, that's a life-threatening situation with an exhausted nervous system. That needs to be taken seriously when anybody approaches your office or your care and you see that they have an autoimmune system disorder, that's a life-threatening disorder. Stress has a powerful effect on brain function. Neurogenesis, it can't even build new pathways if it's under stress and not working right. It starts to shut down. We lose our ability to think. And if you've ever been under stress at all, you know what I'm talking about because you just can't get your head to work. That's the prefrontal cortex shutting down. That affects the gut function. So your digestion is not going to be any good. Your immune sponsors are dependent on the nervous system to work properly, and if not, they will start shutting down and you'll end up with the autoimmune system disorders. Cortisol production goes off the end of the board because we're stuck in fight flight. We end up with vasoconstriction, and that's why people with high blood pressure, that's just a sign that they're in an overaroused state all the time and not recovering. Glucose production. Liver production, because liver has to supply the glucose to the brain that's demanding a huge amount, starts to go crazy. That means the pancreas now has to offset it, and we end up with pancreatic problems. Memory activation. If we stay under high stress, we start to lose the ability to, to move short-term memories into long-term memories. The, the uh, hippocampus starts to shut down. And you don't build any more new memories. And that's what's starting to happen with people. When they go like, I can't remember what I did yesterday, we know that that's a major factor in stress. You can ask people about their memory patterns as new patients coming in. Thyroid function is involved big time. Sociability, as you become more and more under stress, you lose the ability to be social. You'd rather stay home because it's just too much trouble going out. And reproduction, of course, is one of the first things that's shut down because people in fight flight, it's not a good time to get pregnant and have a child. So that's what happens with the effect of stress on just some of the major functions of the body. Okay, important considerations when marketing brain health. This is what we're gonna talk about in the next three series. Accurate brain assessments. What, how do you do an accurate brain assessment in your office? Why is it important? How is age influ influenced in that accurate brain assessment? Because there's a difference in a child's brain, a baby's brain, a child's brain, and, and a, an adult brain. And we need to understand how they're affected. Appropriate retraining. What do you do after the adjustment? What, what is appropriate and what's not appropriate? Complementary procedures that need to follow along the line of that, what that patient's needs are whether it's you need to address their autonomic system or whether you truly need to address their, their cortical patterns and what kind of changes in their, their uh, lifestyle that they would have to make. So we need to be taking a look at all of these things and we'll discuss each one of these in the next group. And then the last part is reassessment. And chiropractors are atrocious about this uh, because chiropractic gets its great results. They, they tend to not reassess. You need to reassess because you need to find out what's next in their care plan? What else can we do to make them the best that they can possibly be, be neurologically? So uh, there is a book that I have, and if you're interested in this, please let us know. A lot of the doctors are buying these by the case, and I think they're like $12.50 a book by the case of 36, I think it is, and giving them out to the patients on the first visit and telling them to read the book. And when you do that, that changes the people's intent and gives them reinforcement. So we do have this available. Uh, the books are normally $20, or, um, and we, when you buy them singly, uh, if you go on Amazon, we never see it, and we don't know what's going on with it, but you can get them a whole lot cheaper by buying them by the case. So that's today's little round, and I hope that this is of value to you. Just get ready, because we're going to be I'm going to be coming at you this fast each time to try to get in what I need to get in. So that's it for today. Um, if you're interested in the books, get in touch with Didi. She can talk to you about what it costs for the, the, the case and how do we get them to you, and we can work from there. So thank you.